All right. So coffee in hand, devotional in the other hand, doing um, make your mark today because we're staying committed to our make your mark devotional in the midst of beginning 100 days to brave. And I think that that is okay. Does anybody else kind of feel like, you know, you really can read uh, like five different books at one time, you know, you don't have to start one to, you know, from do one from start to finish and before you're allowed to pick up another, I believe God is able to speak to us through everything morning, just sent you th three paychecks. <laughs> okay. So I'm going right back. I just replied to you, but I'll go back. I know that you probably, you probably sent another one after that. And that's cool. We'll continue the conversation through the day. So, all right. Um, I, I am, so actually happy that today is a rest day. I was feeling it like Monday night. I think I was feeling it and I haven't been uh, as intentional. I type fast. <laughs> I do too, actually. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so my people, people are seeing me text and they're uh, texting and typing in my phone and they're kind of like, what uh, novel are you writing over there? <laughs> and, I, and I'm just like, I, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm wordy. I, I, and I like to give all the details. So, you know, I like to tell stories, uh, too. And it's funny because whenever I tell stories, uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, my husband will kind of very kindly, he's learned in our years of being married to one another that, uh, I like to give backstory <laughs> before I tell you the current story so that you fully grasp and understand and appreciate either the humor or the irony or the frustration or whatever in the story I'm going to tell you today, you know? So it's just, it's pretty funny. It, uh, it's one of those little things, uh, about me that it, you know, I, I'm not just wordy in here, like, you know, in person to tell a story, but also uh, whenever I really want to convey something in text and type. So anyway, God allows U-turns. God allows U-turns. That's what the devotional is today. We're going make your mark today. Um, even though we're starting 100 Days to Brave, we are only halfway through Make Your Mark, and I'm going to stay committed to Make Your Mark on Wednesdays and just continue on uh, with 100 Days to Brave. Um, in you know, in the days in between, we do uh, make your mark, and I believe that there is a purpose and a plan behind both of these. Actually, kind of being shared at the same time because uh, you know, make your mark is right in that same vein and feeds right into that us be, being our best selves, living fearlessly and living courageously and trusting God in, in all uh, areas of life that we have to be the one to lead the way and may, you know, trust that he will show up and meet us there. And the, you know, the moments where we have to step out before we see something uh, in it, when it's all faith and knowing and believing and not seeing yet. So, all right. So um, I'm just going to pray real quick. Well, first I'm going to say the scripture. I think I want to say the scripture first. So behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In the Amplified, it says, behold, I am doing a new thing. This is God talking to us saying, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive? Do you not? It's like right now. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know? And will you not give heed to it? Will you not recognize it? Will you not start to base your decisions and your attitudes and your perceptions and, you know, your 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 uh, the, the, the words that coming out of your mouth, the decisions you're making in life, the way you're at and interacting with the people around you, the way that you're tackling the projects in your in um, that come across your desk? Will you not give heed? to the new thing I'm doing when, as you're going about your life. Um, I will even make a way in the wilderness 
and rivers in the desert. And we're going to talk about that with the, the wilderness and the rivers and the desert and all that. Hold on. I got to put that down so I can pray. Father God, just thank you so much for the promise that you meet us right where we are in the middle of all of our mess, in the middle of all of our stress, in the middle of seasons where we are lacking things and in the seasons where the, we are have uh, we are overwhelmed. We're feeling overwhelmed and there seems to be too many things going on. And so, Lord, we just trust that you always make a way. We thank you for grace. We thank you for forgiveness. We thank you for repentance. We thank you for the ability to about face and and always have the opportunity to do a do over. Thank you, Father, that we are never stuck. Thank you, Lord, that we are never uh, restricted or held held down and uh, or or held back by you in the in the things that you have promised us, Lord God, but that you are always ordering our steps and telling us which way to go so that we do reach that place of rest in you. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. So today's uh, devotional is make your mark. Day 21. God allows you turns. Sandy Joe. So. Um, we're in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19, and 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 we're and it's funny because we're talking about is saying he's he's telling us, I'm gonna even I'll even make you a road in the wilderness, and I'll make you a road in, I mean, a river in the desert. So let's think about this for just a minute. Imagine a wilderness. A wilderness is a place where there's all kinds of chaos. There's no determined path anywhere. You you have to meander around lots of trees and, you know, uh, nature and, and things that are overgrown and uh, things that are um, in the way. You have to, you know, you would have to push them out of the way sometimes. You would have to go around sometimes. It's not a clear cut path. Um, and so those those, you know, a wilderness is is unless you know your way through that already, you know, uh, then then it's difficult. You could get lost in there. It's difficult to find your way back. Um, you could find yourself off path really uh, easily off track, I should say, because there's not really a path, but off track of, you know, trying to get to the place that you uh, went in, you know, you went into that place, think it through, you were thinking, I'm just going to cut through the, these trees and come out on the other side. And before you know it, you're turned around and actually going in the opposite direction, or, you know, you're going way off, uh, in the, in the direction that you need to be going, but you can't tell because of all the busyness of the trees and the nature and all the crazy things going on around you. Aren't there times in life? Aren't there seasons of life where that is true for us, where we feel like we are in a wilderness? We are in a season of life where things are unclear. There's lots of crazy going on. We don't know exactly which direction we're supposed to be going or we think we do. We have a sense and an idea, but then all kinds of other things start getting in the way. And we're like, how do I move this out of the way? If I, you know, if I do, if I, how do I get um, through this, this troubles, uh, troubling area right here? Um, and, you know, how, how do I navigate through the unfamiliar things that are all around me and how do I deal with all the distractions too? And so, and then the second thing he, he brings in here is the desert. Well, the desert is kind of like the exact opposite. Um, it's, you know, nothing. And it's a lot of nothing except for heat and dry. And I mean, you don't, you can't tell where, it doesn't look like anything is anywhere. Now, I've never been in the desert, okay? And I've only had limited experience with being in any type of, you know, uh, forested area or wooded area. So, I, you know, it's hard for me to imagine, but I've seen some movies. Let's just you know, let our imagination go and go there for a minute and, and, and then apply that to life. So desert, right? It's hot. Uh, it's harsh conditions. There's no water. Um, you don't know when you might get the uh, refreshed and we might when you might find water and when you might find community again. Uh, you, you, you can't uh, you, you turn around in circles, but everything looks the same. Right. 
And so, uh, and you, you know, you get thirsty really quick and you have danger of dehydration. And so his promise is that whether you're in the wilderness or the desert, he's going to make a way. So either way, this is situations in life, times in life, seasons of life where we feel like we're, we're lost. We we're misguided. We've, you know, got, got um, we don't know which, how we got here. Um, we feel like maybe we, you know, we're fearful that we took the wrong step. We took the wrong path. Um, maybe we recognize that we messed up somewhere and we have, you know, landed ourselves here in this less than ideal situation and it's hard and it's discouraging. And, you know, uh, we're just kind of like, why do I have to deal with this when I'm, you know, I just want to get to the promised land, God. <laughs> I just want to get to the good part. So, you know, help me out. And his promise is that even when it looks chaotic and even when it looks hard and even when it looks harsh and dry and sparse and like nothing is working in your favor, he has a promise that he makes a way and that he is actively right now, even in that moment, doing a new thing. So our part is to trust and to believe and to perceive and to know. That's what that scripture says. So in the devotional, she says, I like road trips. I learned to read a map years ago. It was my job on road trips to navigate our journey. We carried an atlas that was about 24 by 18 inches in size. It was like taking a book of posters with us everywhere we traveled. There was a full page for every state, and some states had multiple pages. Years later came MapQuest. We could go online, put in our starting point and the destination, and it would map out the trip for us. We printed each step and created a file folder full of 8 by 11 inch pages mapping out our entire trips. Now we live in the world of GPS and smartphones. Most of the time, the GPS is a wonderful thing, but sometimes the system speaks a few seconds too late to turn. Who's ever experienced that? Who's ever experienced a delayed GPS? Just side note, my husband's phone, his maps is always delayed, like delayed in the in, in moving. You know how the, the screen is supposed to shift and move and so you can see that that blue arrow and the blue line, you know, actually pointing you in the, in the real direction. Cause I need to see the map. I need to see the streets coming up, you know, so I can anticipate. I don't, I don't, I, I got to see it, not just the words, but the physical map. It, that's how my brain works. And there, some, his phone is always delayed and late, especially in the giving of the actual directions. And sometimes, you know, they say turn left and it's like, it's really two roads down, but turn left, but there's a, there happens to be a road right there too. And that's why I like to see the physical image. The, uh, so, cause I've turned left before and then it was like, Oh, making you turn, you were supposed to turn up there. So anyway, um, anyway, anybody else ever been in that situation? So, um, mo uh, sometimes too late to turn and then a U-turn is needed. Many times this scenario has become a point of contention between myself and my sweet husband. He often thinks the GPS might be wrong as it gives a verbal command in 800 feet, turn right. He immediately turns and blames the error on the GPS. One time when this happened, I said, you are the athlete, pretend it's a football field. How far is 800 feet? We laugh about it now. However, I should admit that it has been a tense subject on more than one occasion, especially when in traffic or in an unfamiliar city and when there is no time to take the scenic route. When you miss a command from the GPS, the voice says, at your nearest opportunity, make a U-turn. <laughs> or if you veer away from the suggested route, the voice will say, return to the highlighted route. <laughs> Just recently on a road trip, we were on a very busy street and you guessed it. My sweet husband missed his turn for the next mile. There were no U-turn signs posted at every intersection everywhere. We thought would be a perfect place to turn around and get back on the original path was actually illegal. The Lord used that situation to speak so clearly to me. I was reminded that he does not post no U-turn signs at every intersection. Quite the opposite. Let that sink in, y'all. Quite the opposite. He is not in the habit of posting no U-turn signs. At it, it is his heart 
that when we step out of bounds or get off the intended path, that we turn around. It He calls it repentance. Repentance is a good thing. It is in those times that he begins to nudge us ever so sweetly to turn around and, re, and return to the highlighted route that he has so clearly detailed in the scriptures. In fact, sometimes we hear that still small voice quickening our heart saying, this might be the wrong way. <laughs> That's when it is time to make a U-turn at the nearest opportunity. So here's our make your mark action for the day. It says, do you need to make a U-turn? Why, why are you afraid of turning around? And sometimes I think it's it's not a turnaround always of like we like to think about a turnaround of what we're doing, but God looks at the heart. So that's where I like to think of it. Why am I afraid of doing a turnaround in my heart, in my perspective and how I'm viewing this and how I'm thinking about this situation or myself or my willingness to in the next one, admit that I'm wrong? What lies have you believe that prevent you from admitting that you're wrong? Why is it hard for us sometimes to admit that we've made a mistake or that we've gotten it wrong, that we've missed it somewhere? You know, why is it difficult for us to admit that we need a turnaround in our thinking or in our believing or in our feeling and our focus and our perspective? In the scripture in Isaiah, he says, will you not perceive it? Will you not recognize it? Will you not heed it? That means will you not, you know, consider it before you take action and continue on whatever this foolish you know, path is that we happen to find ourselves on. Before we continue in frustration, before we continue to just sit and stay stuck, what, before we continue to just complain about it or try to find our own ways, a uh, way of escape out of it, or try to reason out why it's happening in our own thinking capacity, don't we know that his way is our higher? Don't we know that he has insight that we don't have? Don't we know that we can trust that he is making a way and he is actively doing something new in our hearts and in our lives right now? So don't we just need to recognize, don't we just need to look for it and perceive it and know it and heed it? U-turn means a fresh start. It is a do-over. Ask the Lord for a fresh start today. So, Father God, thank you for the opportunity to have a fresh start. I can start today over. I can have a fresh start right here, right now. My day didn't start well. I didn't start in the right frame of mind. I didn't start in a, in a good place in my heart. I started in a place of distraction and busyness and frustration and negative thinking or, you know, feeling down on myself, Lord God. And I, and I repent of that. And I ask you to forgive me of that. And I help, and I trust that you have made a way. I trust that you make a way for a fresh start for me. Father God, I pray over the women today who have also like me woken up on the wrong side of the bed and need that fresh start or the woman, the, the moms, Lord, that, that snapped their kids this morning or treated their spouse impatiently this morning or had their first thought when their feet hit the ground, Father, was how much they dread today or, or feel less than who you created us to be uh, and, and, and that our life isn't worth anything. And Father, we just, I just, I, I intercede on their behalf and I pray over those women right now that they that they receive that 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 they heed the voice that they hear and they listen and they act upon and they know and they perceive that you're doing a new thing right here in this moment. You they you are making a way. There is a way in their wilderness, in their deserts. It, wherever it is that, that they are right now, Lord God, you are doing a new thing in their heart and in their mind, and they will walk in it beginning this moment. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. All right. Create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. Amen. Amen. So that's it. That's today's devotional. It's it's I found it so refreshing this morning. And so I hope that you will continue this conversation with me and share with me throughout the day. Come back to this post and share with me in the comments. Like, what are the new things? That God is doing today. How did God turn your morning around today? How it, how do, is uh, do, as He starts to uh, show you in in all the ways? You know, we talked in the devotional of 100 Days Brave last night about how He is working on our behalf. So take a minute and think back over the last couple of days, and and do the same thing as you go into your day today, and th- and and have your eyes open and aware and and perceiving and looking for the rivers in the desert, looking for the clear path in the wilderness where he is working on your behalf, he is making things happen for you. He is turning things around. He has posted a U-turn sign for you to turn your heart and your thoughts and your life even, your day around. So I just, I just agree. I just agree with whatever it is that you are trusting God for right now that he's already met the need. He's already doing the new thing right now. And so the invitation is, will you not perceive it? Will you not look for it? Will you not see it? Will you not heed it? So I encourage you to heed it. All right. All right. I love you, mamas. I love you, sisters. I'll talk to you later today. Please continue to comment and um, pray over all who would hear this today. And all of the women who aren't able to hear it, but need that turnaround, need that do-over, need that U-turn sign. All right. All right. Bye, y'all.